Hello everyone and welcome to another This Week in Racing Diecast Review. Today, Target came in clutch with the entire NASCAR Authentics Wave 2, except for the JTG Doherty number 47. So, in a total, there are 8 cars in here. I burned way too much of my money on this. But, let's get them opened. Starting in numerical order, let's go with the number 3, Richard Childress Racing Car, driven by Austin Dillon. So, car 1 of 8 is now open. This is the 2022 Camaro ZL1 Next Gen model from the new Next Gen Wave 2. It comes with a free sticker that you can peel off and put on like your computer or like a binder or something. But taking a look at the car, we have Bass Pro Shops and Tracker Off-Road as the primary two sponsors, which really confuses it with the Joe Gibbs Racing number 19 of Martin Truex Jr. But sometimes deliveries are almost identical. But of course we got the giant three on the top. Austin Dillon with his uh, Twitter handle on the side. Huck Fishing, BassPro.com on the roof. Bass Pro Shops and Tracker Off-Road on the hood. Tracker Off-Road, Bass Pro Shops. Got a major Lionel quality control error on the side. Uh, DOW, I can't tell. Something bioethanol. Goodyear on the wheel wells. Tracker on the deck lid. On the back, we both have we have both um, Tracker Off Road and Bass Pro Shops. We have the number three. You got the Camaro logo. But overall, the main things you need to watch out for when buying Lionel diecast like this: one, if they roll. The very first one I ever got was a William Byron 2019 Cup diecast, and that thing barely rolled at all. But usually they're pretty good. And the second is quality control, just like this. Sometimes the stickers are placed terribly. Um, you might see that a little bit on the number of the Kevin Harvick car I'm going to review next. But that is it for the number three. Let's move on to the next car in numerical order, the number four, Stuart Haas Racing Ford, driven by Kevin Harvick. And just like the Austin Dillon car, this car comes with a gear wrench number four sticker. They can peel off and put on basically whatever you want. But looking at the car, this is the first Ford model that I have picked up. The first one I'm reviewing. Of course, we have another uh, Lionel moment with the uh, number four being uh, weirdly high up on the car. Gear wrench is also cut off by like by the bodywork. We got gear wrench on the front. The beautiful GT500 bodywork on the front gear wrench on the hood Ford got the Mustang logo Goodyear on the wheel well Goodyear's on the wheel well on pretty much everything of course got more Mustang designs on the back with the uh, headlight stickers gear wrench on the back Ford where the license plate should be mobile one got the number four number four on the top nothing really special about the name here um, and Behind the window, we have some other sponsors like Hunt Brothers Pizza, Haas, Mobile One, and Roush. But that's pretty much it for the Kevin Harvick car. Let's move on to, I believe, it's the first next-gen test car that we have here. So, this car is Kyle Larson's number 5 Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet test car that he ran at the Daytona 5, uh, not Daytona 500, but the uh, Daytona Next Gen Test. This one actually has a black chassis for some reason compared to the other Authentics. Well, this one has a black chassis, but the Austin Dillon one has a gray chassis. So I don't know if they're changing that and they just have the gray interior. A few of these others have it. Um, the Xfinity car that I got does not, so it might be just specifically for the Cup cars. But this one's a lot more plain. We got the Chevy logo, Hendrick Motorsports, Goodyear, got the five big Chevrolet logo. Can't really screw that up, but it's cut off by the wheel. Hendrick Motorsports, Camaro on the back, got the five. A lot of detail. I love how Lionel puts so much detail onto stuff like the wing 
and some of the other small little bodywork pieces like the grill, yet they can't get the stickers right. <laughs> like, looking at this, you, I don't know if this is a fault with how the wrap was made, but still, gotta step up your quality control a little bit. But overall, this is a pretty plain car. It's very similar to the Chase Elliott test car. So let's move on to Brad Keselowski's number six. It's time for Brad. The Texas Motor Speedway pole winner's debut car. This is not a full race livery. This is the RFK Racing launch livery when Keselowski was first announced as a part-time owner of the Roush team. And it looks really good. Love to see green on a race car. Just like the Kevin Harvick car. Got the uh, Ford bodywork. Or got the Mustang GT500 bodywork that's new for this year compared to an older older model of the Mustang. And it looks beautiful. I love to find the next-gen test car that's just blue. But got a lot of RFK stuff here. Got RFK, big letters here. RFK racing on the side. Another RFK in a circle. There's RFK all over this car. Got the 6 on the top. RFK on the hood. Ford. There's basically no other sponsors besides Ford, Goodyear, and RFK on this car. Of course, this one does have the black chassis. Very, very simple chassis design compared to, say, an old cup car. I don't have one with me here. But, um... Compared to an old cup car, this is very smooth, so you can you can run it on a hard surface without anything starting to drag. But overall, aside from the Kevin Harvick car, all the quality control has been pretty good. And of course, on the sticker, all these cars in Wave 2 come with a sticker. We have just massive six. We've got the green and black, which is beautiful. We've got Brad Keselowski and RFK Racing. That's really all you need. But let's move on to the other Hendrick test car. Now, this car, the number 9, this is Chase Elliott's car, almost the same, but pretty much the same as the number 5 Kyle Larson car, except the numbers are different. If you put them side by side, there's no difference in the design, which could have been, could have been better planned if they were going to make both of these into die casts. Um, but same, uh, same sponsors, same everything. And then you get to the number design, which is interesting because these numbers aren't the same font. A lot of teams, you'll see like Richard Childers, Stuart Haas, and now RFK will run basically the same font on all their cars. Hendrick doesn't do that. Um, from what I know, the 24 and the 48 are the same font, but the 9 and the 5 are not. I know the 5 is more of a historical number, but... Still, it's kind of interesting how Hendrick is still one of the only teams that does that. But on the 9, basically all the same sponsors. Um, another thing on the NASCAR Authentics that you can find in like Target or Walmart or Meijer, depending on where you are, um, they have gray interiors, and the ones that you'll find on the NASCAR shop or at, like say, a team gift shop, like I went to Joe Gibbs Racing and got all their die casts at, a gift, at their gift shop a couple years ago. These all have gray interiors. The, um, the other Action Racing Collectibles ones have black interiors, so that's how you can tell the difference. And also, the Action Racing Collectibles cars are sold in boxes and not in... Um, they're not sold in the almost Hot Wheels style packaging that you would normally that you would normally see on stuff like green light hot wheels and m2 machines and other other die casts so let's move on to which cars next Ooh, it's a uh, cole custer's number 41 test car and of course we got another sticker this one's a lot more simple it's got the stripes the uh... cool retro looking stuart house racing logo and a different 41 This could this seems like a throwback livery but Cole Custer did not run this car at Darlington at least I don't think so um but this I believe is his Daytona test car when they did all those group next gen tests 
It's got the big 41 in the circle on the top. Same same pattern everywhere. Got Stuart Haas Racing just splattered on the uh, on the side of the car. Got a nice Ford stripe there. Beautiful Mustang GT500 bodywork. Got the uh, Ford logo with the stripes and the old logo. Same thing on the right side with the left Ford up here next to the window. Something interesting about this car compared to the others, well, not the um, not the two Hendrick test cars, but the test cars have something different. They don't have the driver names on them. So if you look at the top above the window, the 41 doesn't have Cole Custer's name on it, but say the 3 does have Austin Dillon's name and even his Twitter handle on it. But... Got Stuart Haas Racing on the back. 41 is nudging a little bit off the... Uh, it's nudging a little bit off the bodywork there. But overall, quality control on this one's pretty good. So, we are moving on to... The number 88, which is the only Xfinity car in this wave. This diecast is kind of a big deal because this is driven, this car was driven by the one, the only Dale Earnhardt Jr. in a select few NASCAR Xfinity Series races, and just like that, that is enough to turn it into a diecast, and now you see the differences. This is the same from last, uh, from last year, the year before, and the last couple generations of Xfinity diecast, um, compared to the new Next Gen Cup cars. There's a lot more stuff under here that you can point out. Everything on the cup car is super smooth. Which helps it glide along really well. Um this one still rolls really well because it's still off the ground, but if you got something if you have something break here, it's gonna it's gonna drag a little bit. But the way this uh differs from the cup car, you can even see it. This is the Xfinity car is the Camaro SS model. So the bodywork is slightly different. And also it's a lot more comparable to last year's cup car, but still very much different from last year's cup car. But looking at the sponsors, we have a beautiful Hellman's Mayonnaise livery on this historic number 88. Of course we have a sticker. All these come with a sticker. And got the 88... He is driving for his own team. We have the North Carolina flag, Dale Jr. signature, Jr. Motorsports logo. Hellman's splattered all over this car. Um, got degree, the Fridge Hunters, or hashtag Fridge Hunters. That's another Hellman's. Mag Tools. Got a ton of sponsors on here. Got Camaro. More Camaro bodywork. 88. Come on, focus. Simpson, Sunoco on both sides. Good year on the wheel wells, like pretty much everything. And that's pretty much it. We have this is a, this is an Xfinity car, so if it's different, that's why it's a completely different series with completely different cars. Like the Supra, Toyota only runs the Supra in the Xfinity series and not in the Cup series. They still run the Camry. But on to the final diecast of the day, we have Daniel Suarez's number 99 Trackhouse car. And this car is where we have the first kind of weird exception. The rivets are really screwy on this car. Can't tell why, but you rivets are slanted. There we go kind of snap back in there but I'll work on it but otherwise this um, this is kind of an issue the uh, there's nothing holding the wheel in uh, I'll fix that but we got this is the big uh, this is the track house test car of course track house did the um, project 91 program where they ran Kimi Raikkonen at the uh, Watkins Glen race and he DNF'd which is not surprising for his first NASCAR race but it kind of it wasn't really his fault but other than the uh, obvious uh, Lionel quality control issues here with the with the wheels, still rolls fine. 
I just had really bad OCD. Got track house all over the car. Big track house logo on the sides. I love the number design for the the 99. Got a good year on the wheel wells. This is another Chevy. I got, in terms of cup cars, I got one, two, three, four Chevys and three Fords. And then this one extra Chevy Xfinity car. But that is pretty much it, other than the uh, we have our first uh, certified Lionel moment on this channel. And uh, hopefully we can get that fixed and get this into our new 60 second diecast review series, which the first episode is coming out next Sunday. Um, hopefully. But. Yeah, that's it for today's This Week in Racing Diecast Review, where I bought every single NASCAR Authentics Wave 2 diecast, except for the number 47, because I couldn't find it. Uh, thank you, Target. You always had to uh, not uh, not agree with me in one specific spot. But other than the 47, this is the complete NASCAR Authentics Wave 2 um, the iCast collection. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any news, videos, more diecast reviews like this, any racing clips, or any new racing stories, which I will have my first racing story come out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Let's try and get to 50 subscribers by the end of the year, because honestly, I'm getting kind of desperate. Oh yeah! And join the Discord server! Join the Discord server, link in the description down below, and go subscribe to my main channel, link in the description right below the Discord link. Thank you everyone so much for watching this week in Racing Diecast Review. Bye!